In today's episode, we are speaking about the biblical story of the first humans and their relationship to the gods. It's a core story that we have no idea why we even know it. So like a curious traveler on a quest, we embark upon the winding roads of information to stay with us for the ride and the knowledge. And does the following story sound familiar to you? In the beginning, a divine force created the universe by separating elements from the chaotic boy, light and dark, heaven and hell. The first humans were formed from clay and lived in a paradise free of pain, scent, and cold. But a clever creature tricked the humans and fell from their perfect state into a flawed world. That's the world we know today. Now, if you think that's the story of Adam and Eve for the Bible, you're right. But it's also a story common to other religions. Nearly every religious culture told its own set of creation myths, and they share a remarkable number of similarities, including key elements of life. Humans fashioned from clay, a trickster figure who subverts God's plan for creation, and a woman Pepe to blame for sin and pain. It appears that the ancient authors from China, Egypt, Iceland, Greece, Mesopotamia, and the Americas were all wrestling with the same big questions. Where did we come from? And why is our world the way it is? And all of them use myths to make sense of it. All of these stories just add up to their relationship status. The plot can be understood not as a struggle between God and the devil, but as a conflict involving the dramatic, raw, masculine God of the heavens and the primordial mother goddess. For millennia, she had been worshipped as the mistress of the earth, and it seems the story is told from the point of view of the winner. The goddess is not even mentioned by name. She is represented there as the tree of life. This is how she was depicted by the ancient Canaanites. Asherah was represented in tree form, and it's not surprising. Yahweh declared the tree and its fruit. They were all kabu. The Apostle Paul took the creation story and turned the fall of Adam into sin. That's the whole reason for redemption. For Paul, Jesus came not to reestablish earthly righteous political rule as the Jews expected, but it saw the problem posed by Adam's disobedience and fall. In Adam's fall, we send all. Now, at least that's what Paul taught. And according to some theologians, their theories go that Christ paid the debt that Adam had incurred, one that only a God-man had the righteousness and the ability to pay. The word sin actually never appears in the story. And the serpent appears more truthful than Yahweh. Yahweh kills the man and a woman. If you eat fruit from that tree, on that day you will certainly die. But instead, Adam lives on to a very ripe old age of 930 years old. The serpent, on the other hand, tells them that they will not die, but instead promises that they will become wise, like God, knowing good and evil. So how did the ancient people understand serpents? Certainly not as some kind of evil. Not at all. The serpent was, and in some cultures still is, regarded as the source of great wisdom. The serpent can shed its skin and go on living. The serpent was regarded as a symbol of immortality. The serpent was regarded in the ancient world as the messenger from the true great God. The serpent was the guardian of her world. And if this is symbolism, then the story of the Garden of Eden, that takes on new dimension as well. The goddess was not a newcomer to human history. From a human point of view, Yahweh is much more recent. Humanity was originally hers. And from this beginning, Yahweh tries to isolate her. Her guardian, the serpent, is represented by the cherub 
whose job is to keep humans away from that tree of life, the mother. And the problem for Yahweh continues. The mother, whose offspring is always some form of a god of love and sex, they tempt the sons of God, and I come down and cohabitate with the daughters of men. This leads Yahweh to decide to destroy the whole earth with a great flood. Now, third on a history devourer relates Israel repeatedly going after other deities. In particular, it is the goddess of Shara who tempts the Israelites to become unfaithful to Yahweh. Even one of the tribes of Israel, Asher, seems to have been made after her. Archaeologists have confirmed through the discovery of many images of Asherah and her sister, the goddess of Scarte, that the prophets did not exaggerate. The goddess remained until the end of biblical time, the biblical period, a major divinity for those people. Jeremiah, an eyewitness to the final destruction of the nation of Judah, laments that even the Israelites were still baking cakes for the Queen of Heaven. Now, the official dogma of Israel was that Yahweh is the one and only God who creates and rules all. Heaven completely triumphs over earth. And in the second version of the Ten Commandments, Israelites are commanded to cut down their Asherah. And sometimes Yahweh and Asherah seem very close. Her image and a bronze serpent, they were found within the temple. And they were probably next to the Ark of the Covenant. At other times, however, her cult stood opposed to the official cult. The wisdom of Asherah's serpent is medicinal healing wisdom. That is why the serpents coil themselves around the physician symbol. For our share of harmony with the cycles and rhythms are also helpful. She offers the bark from a willow tree to ease panics, and the bark of a shrub that grows high in the mountains to cure a skin disease. The prophets attributed the fall of Jerusalem in 587 before the common era to Israelites' unfaithfulness. They were whoring around after other gods. Israel had endured an uneasy relationship between the cults of Yahweh and Asherah. And when Israel returned from exile and attempted to live a righteous life away from Asherah, Judaism became a religion of the heavenly law, imposed by the king of James. And piety became defined as subservience to a set of rules. And after you listen to the wisdom of the serpent, Asherah has sacred places Wells, rivers, mountains, caves, but no chosen people, no a link. However, until we end the demonization of a share of the consequences seem obvious and frightening. Quite simply, she will remain what we have made her a demoness, and her society will continue to be plague. So will the wisdom of the serpent ever be heard? Well, maybe, just maybe. This is what this new age we're in is all about. However, until we end the demonization, going back, Gary, and we'll clear off your horror doing this. However, until we end the demonization of y'all of the hip, stop, go back. Sorry that I know that's in your ear. Here we go. Back, ape. We could fix this. Thank you for watching this and all our videos. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with your friends. It helps our algorithm. So until we see each other again, stay curious, fellow travelers, and have a great day.